So welcome. Thank you so much. We're really excited about this weekend. Um, it's been a long time coming, so we're really, really excited about this one. Um, today, we're going to go through what's going to happen on Saturday and how to get involved. And if you have any concerns or questions about um, iNaturalist, because it's an app that can be confusing, you can ask them today. Or afterwards, you can email me as well. Um, I want to say a special thanks to Climate Impact for making this uh, BioBlitz possible in our previous BioBlitzes. We've had three or four now that they've made possible. This one is unique that it's only one day. Our previous BioBlitzes were actually over a month time. So we're looking at more specific one day kind of BioBlitz. So everybody cross your fingers for good weather um, so that we see lots of species. Also, huge shout out to Granite Reet and Electra. Um, both of these organizations are teaming up. Every species seen uh, during the BioBlitz, um, they will donate $20 to uh, Riverwood, which is awesome. So if you went out and you took a picture of a sugar maple leaf, that's $20 donated to conservation of Riverwood. So uh, thank you so much, Granite Reet and Electra also for donating that much. And that's up to 250 species. So once we hit the 250 species mark, um, that's what they've donated already, which is awesome. And I think we could get there. Um, so let's jump right into it. Uh, we do have a couple more people jumping in here. So what is on the schedule for today? We're going to go through what a BioBlitz is. Some people don't know that term. Um, how to use iNaturalist on your phone and your computer. I'm going to run through how to use uh, both of those. What to take images of. We're going to talk about contest rules and prizes, which I'm sure everyone's really excited about. I put it at the end of the presentation, so you have to stay for the whole thing. <laughs> and then uh, any questions, we'll have a question period. And at that point, I'll stop recording. So what is a BioBlitz? What is a BioBlitz? And I'm sure some of you have been in BioBlitzes before. Uh, it is a temporary citizen science effort to record as many species as possible within a specific location and time. And you could type in the chat if you've been part of a BioBlitz before, maybe um, at Riverwood, maybe at another organization. Um, some people might do the annual Christmas bird count. Um, if you're aware of that one, that one's kind of a global thing. Um, so there's lots of things uh, that are considered BioBlitzes. So what we're looking at, um, let's break it down a little bit, as many species. So that can be plants, animals, um, uh, even tracks. So plants, so trees, wildflowers, weeds, animals, birds, mammals, insects, fish, if you catch a fish or see a fish, <laughs> uh, reptiles, amphibians, and then even tracks, which we'll talk about near the end. So like oh, cool. footprints that are in um, the mud or scat or poop. Um, fur, holes in the ground, or holes in a tree. Those are all tracks. And actually, you can upload pictures of those tracks. And uh, iNaturalist will actually try its best to identify what that is. And that counts as a species because that species was here. So um, lots of things you could take pictures of. We'll talk about that in a second. Huh. Specific location at Riverwood. It has to be at Riverwood within the Riverwood boundaries. And on your screen now, you see um, the actual map boundaries of Riverwood. Um, uh, let me get my little laser pointer here. Um, so right now we uh, at Chapel House, I'm in Chapel House right now, we're right at the end of this road here. So that's Riverwood Park Lane. We have Burdenthorpe Road. So you drive in here and then you can explore anything on the trails, of course. Um, obviously, you're not going to get across the Credit River unless you have like waders and you're don't do that. <laughs> but uh, all of this is free range. So um, as long as it's within these barriers, it counts. The trouble uh, is um, if you go down uh, on Cullum Trail, Cullum Trail actually goes into Arendelle Park and Hewick Meadows. So if you go too far under either uh, Highway 403 or too far under Burnthorpe Bridge and you're taking pictures and you're still thinking you're bioblitzing, any of those images that you upload, um, they actually won't count because they have a location associated with them. So it has to be within Riverwood's boundaries for this one. And then um, specific time. So Saturday, July 22nd, uh, between 7 a.m. and 11 p.m. So the park, Riverwood, is open from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. So that's the time frame that we put um, 
uh, the, the bio blitz to run from. We will be in the barn. Uh, Derek, myself, and uh, Sam will all be in the barn, McEwen Barn, right across from Visual Arts Mississauga. And we'll be there from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So if you have any questions on the day of or you need troubleshooting with your phone or your camera, please stop by the barn and ask us. And we're happy to um, figure out whatever the problem is, okay? But yes, you can come out super early or you can stay a little bit later, try to get bats or moths or uh, some nocturnal animals as well to add to your list. And just to show you, this is what um, our last year bio blitz look like at the very end of it. Um, so this is what it will look like on iNaturalist, hopefully after Saturday. Uh, we got 517 species last year. We had uh, 2,500 um uh, over 2,500 observations. So observations are actual like photos that were taken and submitted to iNaturalist. Um, identifiers, you don't have to worry about quite yet, but observers, 79 people. So you will be an observer, for example. So 79 people came out to Riverwood and took this many photos, if that makes sense. And here's some species that we saw in the springtime. We are hoping, um, uh, our last bio blitz was April to May. And really the highest biodiversity starts kind of late May. So we missed kind of a high biodiversity. Um, it, it was a, a big time of change. So we got a lot of migratory species or spring ephemerals, but we didn't get like the bulk of plants and insects that will be out this weekend. So we're hoping that on Saturday, we can actually beat this. We're hoping, we'll see, we'll see if that happens, but there's lots of plants and insects out now. So we should be able to. So how to use iNaturalist? I know that's why the bulk of you are probably here to kind of um, see how to use iNaturalist. And we're gonna go through how to use it on your phone or on your computer. I'm just gonna put a poll up and it should say, how will you be participating during the BioBlitz? So will you be using your cell phone? So an Android or an iPhone, or will you be bringing out like an actual camera, taking images and then going home and uploading it to your computer? All right, <clears throat> so it looks like we have 100% of people answer. Great, so most people, 82% of you will be using uh, your cell phone and then 17% will be using a camera and uploading to um, the computer uh, at home. So we'll go through both of them today, um, but just so you know the bulk of it, okay. So we're going to go first through how to use it on your iPhone. And I will say um, there are some differences between, um, sorry, I keep saying iPhone, your cell phone. Um, there are some differences between using an iPhone and, and using an Android. They're quite similar. Um, I'll point out kind of the differences. The one that I'm using right now to show you on the screen is going to be an iPhone because that's what I use. But Android's a little bit different. Um, you're free to ask questions along the way. Um, you can also follow along if you want to on your phone now. So the first thing we want to do is join our BioBlitz. Um, and sorry, there's just some people joining us here. Um, so you're going to want to... Um, make sure that you have an account on iNaturalist. It's completely free to make an account. So you would download it in the app store, um, download it and create an account and that's completely free. Once you've got to that point, you have an account, you've had it all set up on your phone, you're gonna join our project. Um, and how you do that is step number one, you're gonna go to projects down here on the far right. Now, if you are an Android user, it's most likely that you'll have all of your um, buttons on the left-hand side instead of on the bottom. I don't know if it's still like this. Last year, it was like that, where Android had all of the selections on the, the left side of your screen. For iPhones, all of your buttons that you're going to be worried about are at the bottom. So you're going to select projects. And then you're gonna go up to search for a project name. So all of these projects that you see here, these are just on my personal account. These are projects that I am joined to, um, but you're gonna go and you're gonna type TRC Summer Bio Blitz 2023 in the, in the search bar. You're gonna press search 
And then you're going to find us here and you're going to press join. Um, so under TRC Summer Bio Blitz 2023, you're going to press join. I believe there's about 33 people that have um, already joined us. So we'd like to get that number up if you're actually going, going to come out to the Bio Blitz. So join it. Right now, there obviously won't be any observations because it doesn't start until Saturday. Please, if you have questions or you want me to go slower, please type them in the chat. I'm going to go to the next one. Now, submitting observations. So uh, what you see here is after you submitted photos over time, this is what it's going to kind of look like on your screen here. So these are some of the photos of things that I've taken over time um, and I've submitted to iNaturalist. You might not have anything there when you go on your main screen. You're going to click observe in the very middle of your phone. Once you hit observe, you have two options. So one option is using your camera, and this is going to require uh, iNaturalist to, to um, see your camera roll. This is the way that I do um, bio blitzes. So I go out, I take pictures of as many things as possible. So plants, insects, birds, and then I go into iNaturalist after and submit them all. So if you do it that way, you're going to click camera and you're going to go through your camera roll and select whatever photo you want to add. The, um, the other way you could do it, sorry, flip that. Camera rolls on this side, cameras on that side. Sorry, everyone, I'm confusing you off the top. Um, camera rolls on this side. If you click camera, it'll open up your camera and you'll take a photo directly through the um the app. So you don't have to upload anything. You'll just take a photo right on the app and it will submit it right away. Uh, so there's two ways you could do it. You could go out, you could just open your camera and just take photos of everything and then submit them later. Or you can go and take a photo at a time through the app. Once you do that, this is what it's going to look like. So if I uploaded this photo of these yellow flowers, it's going to be up at the top here. And then you have a couple selections that we're going to go through. But what you're going to do is you're going to press, what did you see? And sorry, I just see in the chat. Oh, thank you. Somebody said on Android, it says take photo. And then the other option is choose image. Okay, so that's great. I actually think that's more clear on Android. It should say take photo or choose image because camera <laughs> and camera roll are kind of confusing. But basically take photo and camera are the same and camera roll and choose image are the same. Thank you for noting that. So once you've um, uploaded something, what you're going to do is you're going to press, what did you see? Is everyone following along? Mm -hmm. So you press, what do you see? And then what's going to happen is iNaturalist actually has a really cool technology where it scans your entire photo and it compares it to other photos that other people have taken. And it can actually um, attempt to identify that species for you. So when I uploaded this, I said, what did you see? It first gives you the genus um, right here. And I'll show you kind of the breakdown of what a genus is. And then it gives you the actual species that it could possibly be. So the top suggestions, it usually gives you 10 suggestions. And the first one, is usually correct. If you're not 100% sure, and that goes for um, a lot of small bugs and ants and fungi, there's many species that look so, so similar. Um, sometimes it's safer just to put it under genus if you're not 100% sure and you can't really see the differences between them. And that's just because uh, somebody might come back in and say, oh, I don't think it's that species. I think it's actually this species. So if you're not sure, you could click genus. But if you're like, I think that pretty much looks like Colt's foot, then you can click that. So the first um, is usually the, the closest to. And I'm sure you remember this from like grade four science, I think, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Um, so kingdom is obviously the broadest um, uh, grouping. We really want to get down to species. That's what we're most interested in. But again, if you can't get it down to species, you can always click genus, which is always suggested at the very top. Um, but we know this is Colt's foot, so we select that. So once you do that, there's a couple of options and there's some confusing things that are down below. And this might look different again on Android if you're following along. 
The first thing here is the date and the time. This is really important um, because if it's the wrong date or the wrong time, it won't be added to the BioBlitz because if it's on a Sunday or if you took that image a week ago, it's not going to upload it. Um, your phone should automatically uh, upload the date and time because every photo that you take on your cell phone, it should have a date, a time, and a GPS coordinate associated with it unless you have um, turned off privacy mode, which some people do, but we can get into the nitty gritty during the, the question period if you're having troubles with that right now. So the date and time, um, the location, again, when you take a photo on your phone or through the app, there should be a coordinate associated with that photo. So it automatically should say the Riverwood Conservancy. Sometimes it says Mississauga, but it's in the right range. Um, that works. That's fine. As long as it's within the range. So like this, it will show you a little dot on it. The other thing um, is geo privacy and geo privacy is not something that you have to concern yourself with. Um, basically what it is, is it, um, if you found a really rare species that was um, uh, potentially at ri risk of extinction. So if you stumbled upon a spotted turtle at Riverwood or a Jeff Jefferson salamander, um, sometimes they ask you to be private about where the actual location is, because unfortunately there are people that will come and actually take wild turtles that are rare out of the wild or wild um, anything really that are super rare. So um, that is a really rare case. And I completely avoid it for everything at Riverwood because there's not really anything that's super, super rare and needs to be hidden. But basically there's options to keep that the um, location private to the, the general public. And so only scientists can see where uh, the geolocation is. Do we have a question? Are we okay? Okay, so the next thing is captive or cultivated. This is a huge one, especially at Riverwood because we have tons of gardens. Um, there's also a lot of pets on site. So uh, if it is captive or cultivated, captive being like a cat or a dog on site, which happens all the time, and then cultivated being like a garden, um, like a plant, some sort of tropical plant. Um, those things will not be considered, um, will not be put into the bio blitz. They don't count because they're not a wild species. So try to avoid gardens, taking pictures of plants in the gardens. You're free to take pictures of any insects that are in the gardens. Gardens are a great place to find insects and, and, and um, a lot of species, but nothing captured or cultivated will be included. And if you accidentally take a photo of something that's cultivated in a garden, usually uh, one of the staff member here will, will notice that it's not something that's actually local and we'll just pin it as cultivated and we can change that ourselves. Um, but just so you know, uh, no, no capture for cultivated things. And then projects, you don't have to worry about it. If you've joined our bio blitz on um, underneath projects, uh, this will automatically be put into the project. You don't have to do anything here. So these last three options here, you don't have to touch at all. Um, it's just making sure that the date and time and the location are, are automatically being inputted when you, um, when you add a photo. Any questions, please post them in the chat. And then you're gonna click share. And that's gonna share it to the entire world. Um, so the whole point of this is trying to figure out how many species we have and researchers around the world will use your data, the photos, the, the location, the timing of certain species to figure out populations, to figure out what the impacts of climate change are on these species. Um, it's huge. It's, it's really great, uh, the citizen science effort, because now if you think about one scientist that's studying some sort of mouse, they before had to go out into the field and they had to survey so many different areas in order to figure out the populations. But now there's thousands and thousands of people that are recording different species. And so scientists can actually just use that data, which is awesome. So once you've submitted uh, your first thing, I know it's changed from the colt's foot to now a white-throated sparrow, I apologize for that. 
but this is what it's going to look like. So this is my image of a white-throated sparrow and it has the Latin name beside it. What we're trying to get all of our species to is research grade at the very top. So what happens is I will suggest that it's a white-throated sparrow like we did before. And then what happens is other people, identifiers is what they're called, will either agree or disagree that this is a white-throated sparrow. So this person here has um, agreed with me. They said, yep, that's a white-throated sparrow. And then another person that's also on iNaturalist also saw this and said, yeah, that's a white-throated sparrow. And once you have either one or two con confirmations that that species is correct, you'll get research grade. And that's meaning that a scientist can use this for research. So we really, really want it to get to research grade um, so that we can understand the species here. And we'll talk a little bit about prizes too, because it's important to, to note the research grade. Any questions about phones? Any questions about phones? I'm gonna just, no? Okay, um, I'm hoping everyone can see my screen now here. Um, can everyone see my iNaturalist screen? Can you just say yes in the chat if you could see my screen here? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Okay. Awesome. Sorry. Just confirming. <laughs> okay. So this is how to use it on your computer. So this is the desktop version of iNaturalist. Um, this is me signed in here. The exact same things. They're the same buttons. It's just obviously in a different place. So uh, to join the uh, project online, you're going to sign in just like normal. And then you're going to go under community and you're going to click projects. And then you'll get this page that has tons of different projects and they're really cool to look at. They're not always local, obviously. Um, I mean, Flora of Africa, I'm not gonna contribute too much to this project, but it's cool to see too. Um, you're gonna click in the search bar, TRC Summer BioBlitz 2023. You're gonna click go. It's gonna be the only suggestion. You're gonna click it. And then at the top right-hand corner, oh, a lot of you have joined, that's awesome. Um, you'll see the member where it says members, you'll get the option to join. It will see join for you, but I'm already joined. So that's why. And then it will show you uh, a little bit more information than the iPhone version does. So it gives you how long until it starts. It gives you all of the requirements. Um, the journal here, I'll be posting in the journal, which is basically just little updates throughout the day on things people have seen. It gives you the range. And as people start adding to this, you'll see little dots, little tags of where people are finding certain things. Um, so really cool to check this out beforehand and join it. But what we're gonna learn is how to actually submit something. So um, you'll see if I make this smaller, it's gonna turn into a uh, green arrow. But if I make it larger, it says upload, doesn't matter. You can click on either. And you're gonna click on upload. And you're going to get this option. So you can either choose files, which would be like, um, if you click on this, you could choose from any of the files that are on your computer. You could search for files, or you can just drag and drop, which is what I'm going to do. I have three photos that I took at Riverwood. We're going to pretend, and I'm just going to drag and drop here. And then I'm going to make it bigger for everyone to see. So this is what it's going to look like. Um, so I have my three photos. We're going to cancel these because it's already guessing. And so this would be the case if you came out with your, like a professional camera and you wanted to go home, sit down, plug it in, upload all your photos at once. You can upload um, as many photos on here as you want uh, at one time. And uh, you just... Um, with cameras, it's a little bit difficult than your phone. You have to make sure that it has the right date and time. And some of your cameras are not going to include a coordinate when you take photos. If you have an older camera or one that doesn't include that, I don't have that. So when I 
upload my photos from my camera, it doesn't have any of the information like what's on your phone. So you're going to have to manually input that, which is fine. I'm going to go through that right now. So for example, if we have this little bird here, um, what we're going to do is we're going to change the date and location first, because if we went straight to species, the um, iNaturalist doesn't know where you're taking this image. So it scans the whole world to figure out where that thing is. So it could be giving you the wrong species. It's really important that we click location. And then what you can do is you can write the Riverwood Conservancy. And it will bring us to this. So it will bring us to a map. Now, this is where um, it gets a little bit tricky. So you kind of have to figure out if you don't have the GPS coordinates on your camera, you have to figure out where you were. So it's really important if you can remember those things or big like little notes along the way, um, or if you know your way around Riverwood really well. So you can select where you saw it. So say you were on Cullum Trail, you would select about there. Okay. Or if- I might do both. Oh, you figured it out? <laughs> Um, or if you, I'm sure everyone knows the old wagon that's on Chapel Lawn. Um, up here, you could click there. Or if you saw it at the bird feeders behind Chapel House, you could click there. Okay, does that make sense? So you would select where you saw those things. It's a little bit more tedious than the automatic version, right? The one thing um, to be careful for, though, is if you, say, saw something right there, or if you weren't sure and you made the range a little bit bigger, that's that's saying, I don't really know exactly where that thing is. It was somewhere within that range. That's totally fine. You can do that. But if anywhere um, of this red circle is outside of Riverwood's range, so if it's just a little bit past Riverwood into Arendelle or Hewitt Meadows and it's past the barrier, it won't be counted in the BioBlitz. iNaturalist will not automatically upload it because it's only specific to Riverwood. So any bit of this location is outside of the range, it won't upload it. So that's one of the troubles with um, doing it automatically. So it's best if you uh, to keep it small, but if you don't really know, you can make the range a little bit bigger, just be careful that that red circle's in the correct place. So let's say we saw the chickadee behind Chapel House on the um, bird feeders. So you add it, um, and then you can also click the date. Uh, obviously, I can't go forward in time because you can't see photos forward in time. But let's say it happened today. And so you click on the date and then the time you can also change here. So we'll say 930 a.m. So the date and time. And now what you're going to do is now you're going to click species and it's the exact same thing as your phone. It will bring up First, the genus. We're pretty sure this is in the genus, chickadees and allies. Here are our top suggestions. So then it's gonna give you species suggestions. Um, we're birders here, so we know that it's a black capped chickadees. We're gonna click on that. And that's gonna be a submission, but you don't have to click submit right away. You can do tons of these at a time. Um, so now the next time you click location, it's actually gonna automatically bring you to Riverwood. So you don't have to figure it out again. So let's say this little bug was seen in the pollinator garden on Chapel Lawn. You're gonna click there. You're gonna update observations. Um, oh, sorry, it's not the bug. Okay, we'll say this needle is found on Chapel Lawn. The date and time, we'll just click that. Sure, that's great. Um, and then the species, uh, again, genus, pine, and then here are their top suggestions. Now, um, really cool. You don't have to take a picture of the whole tree or plant. Uh, leaves work, needles work. So it's actually, it's really cool that it's identifying that there's five needles. So it's probably the eastern white pine, which is correct. And we'll just do it one more time just to solidify everything. We're going to click location. We saw this bug maybe back on the mouse trail. We're going to update it. We're going to do date and time and the species is a red banded leafhopper. So again, the genus, and then it's gonna give us species, just like that. Now, there is a way to edit multiple photos at a time. If you click on the first one and then you press shift, you can select more than one. 
And then you can, um, in the left-hand corner here, you can edit multiple dates and times. So if you want to um, put them all in one place, it's best to be specific for each species, but say you don't have time, um, you could put them all here and you can make the, the range a little bit bigger and you just say this, and then that updates all of the locations to that. So again, if you don't wanna do it each species one at a time, you click on the first one, you press shift, and then you could select more than one and you can edit them as you can see, it says editing three observations, editing multiple species, editing multiple dates, and you could just change it from there. Okay. And then at the top right corner, you're going to press submit three observations and it's going to save them and submit them. Do do do. Eventually. All right. And this is what it will look like. So um, we have those three observations we just sent in. We have the date and time, the location. And then this is what it's going to say until somebody agrees with you. It's going to say needs ID. And I'll try to scroll down. So these are all my um, uh, observations that I've made. Uh, for example, let's go to one that's research grade. You can see here, this is research grade. So that's what we're trying to get to. So if I click on this submission, which I believe was at Riverwood, yep, it's at Riverwood. You can see the map here. This is my photo. I thought it was a Red Admiral. Someone agreed with me that it's a Red Admiral. And so it's research grade, which is pretty cool. Okay, so I, that is pretty much it. Any questions about the computer portion of it? No questions? Okay. We always have time for questions at the end. You should see my screen again. Um, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about what, take, what to take images of. <clears throat> so the biggest thing is to please leave no trace on Saturday. Um, leave what you find behind. Uh, so anything, any kind of bug or plant or anything like that, don't pick anything, just leave it there, take photos of it there. Stay on the trail is a huge one. I know, I know, I know um, how exciting it is. I am guilty of it too, how exciting it is to see like a butterfly flying and you want to get across a field to go see it. Please stay on the trail. Not only does it damage our ecosystem, but also it's it's quite dangerous right now. We have um, poison ivy, we have parsnip, and we have lots of ticks, unfortunately. Well, I shouldn't say lots of, but we do have ticks. So please stay on the trail um, and be safe. If you're on the trail, there's no issues at all. And again, you don't have to get the, the best image. It doesn't have to be like um, a perfect photograph. Really, I've taken some blurry images that I'm like, I think I think this can be able to like this will be able to be identified and it does. So if you're a little bit farther away, totally fine. Take a photo, upload it and see what happens. People might not know what it, it is and they may suggest that it's something else. Totally cool, okay? And then respect wildlife, obviously don't get too close. Things you could take photos of, birds. Again, you're not gonna get photos like this, especially if you're using your iPhone or maybe you are, but um, these photos are taken with a camera. They do not need to look this good by any means. They can be much farther away. As long as you're getting those colors or the figures in them, you're good to go. It could be mammals. Uh, one of the first things I suggest you do when you come to Riverwood, try to find the three species of squirrels um, and get those off the bat because those are the ones that will come right up to you. <laughs> so gray squirrel, red squirrel, and chipmunk are all on site. Take photos. You have three species there. And I'm seeing, and do not feed the animals. Thank you. That, that is very true. Reptiles and amphibians, uh, toads, snakes, turtles. Uh, we have a beaver pond that has turtles basking on the pond every day now. So go down to the beaver pond and check out what you can find there. Um, all of these things in, are included. And then a big one that I think people miss is plants. That is probably where the highest uh, diversity of things will be. Um, so take pictures of leaves on the trees. Take pictures of plants that are growing. Take pictures of um, even fungi. I know fungi is not a plant, but there is lots of mushrooms and fungi out right now. 
The key with our plant species is to take multiple photos. So you can actually, when you upload images on iNaturalist, you can select, um, I think, up to four photos per observation. So for example, if you had um, a tree, you could take a picture of its bark the whole structure of the tree and then the leaf itself, and then um, submit those three images together so that people have a better understanding of what kind of tree it is. That's helpful too. And then insects is another one. Next to plants, insects are probably the highest biodiversity that you're gonna get at Riverwood. So if you want a lot of species and you want a chance to win something, a prize, go and look for insects. Um, there are so many things, even looking at right now, there's so many things flying around. Um, our pollinator garden is a really, really good spot to stop by and check out um, to find these bugs. And these are all bugs that were found at Riverwood. So we have, uh, uh, I don't know what kind of bumblebee this is, maybe, mm, I'm not even going to guess, maybe two spotted, brown belted, I don't know, um, but a bumblebee, red banded leaf hopper, and then uh, a hair streak butterfly too. So all of these are around. And like I said at the very start, take photos of uh, tracks too. So footprints in the mud, if you're seeing a, a nest up in the tree or a bird nest up in the tree, um, poop or scat is a huge one too. Uh, anything that you can find uh, at Riverwood counts. And like I said, we have lots of plants here. So we have 1,400 plant species, 180 resident and migratory birds, and then 55 mammal species. So there's tons to find at Riverwood. And then the part that everybody's uh, waiting for, contest rules and prizes. We have really cool prizes this year, which I'm excited about. Um, so rules, kind of what I've already gone through. Images must be taken within Riverwood boundaries. We know that. Images must be taken on Saturday, July 22nd between 7 a.m. and 11 p.m. They must be personal images only. So you have to take the photos. Images must be of wild plants and animals, no cultivated plants or domestic animals. Only one account can win each prize. So basically what that means is that um, uh, if you wanted to, uh, if you have a family that wants to work together to uh, uh, submit to the BioBlitz, you have to all be on that same account to take photos. You can't uh, have multiple accounts going and taking images or it won't all be together. It's only one account that will win each prize. And all observations, this is key, all observations must be submitted by Tuesday, July 25th. So uh, if you're somebody coming out with a camera and you're taking your photos and then going home and plugging it in and submitting them online, you have until Tuesday, July 25th to submit your last observations. At that point, we're gonna cut it off and we're gonna go through everything and then determine who won the prizes. So uh, prize number one, the account with the most species observations, and I'll tell you what that means in a second, will win a new pair of Vortex 10x42 Triumph uh, binoculars. Um, I use Vortex binoculars. They're my absolute favorite. Um, these are really, really cool. Uh, and they're actually thanks to Urban Nature Store in Mississauga. They have donated to us for the BioBlitz. So account with the most species gets a new pair of binoculars. And basically what that means, if you are on our iNaturalist page, you'll go under observers, like I talked about before, and that's any of you guys, you guys are observers, and you're looking at this column. And that's the number of species that uh, that person has seen. So for example, um, Beth had taken 327 photos and submitting them on iNaturalist. Out of those 327 photos, 124 species, and those have to be research grade. So um, you can see here that even though Jacqueline um, or even Nina took less, less photos than Beth, they had more species overall. So we're really looking for diversity. We're trying to find diversity. Um, you can take multiple photos of like gray squirrels. You could take multiple photos of um, like the milkweed that's behind me here, you could take multiple photos of the, of the same species, but it's not going to add to the number of species that you have. And again, it, it must be research grade. Each has to be research grade. 
Uh, prize number two, best photograph chosen by our TRC volunteer committee. We did this last year too, which is a lot of fun. Um, so we will be bringing it down to five photos that we believe are the best photographs of the BioBlitz. And we'll be giving them to the volunteer committee here and they're gonna choose the winner. And the winner gets a really cool birding starter kit donated to us by Armstrong. And it has basically everything you need to uh, start a bird feeding station in your backyard. So it has suet bell, it has seed, it has a nice bird feeder. So it's a pretty cool prize. You do not need a good camera to win this. Um, there were a couple of images last year that were uh, taken on, on the actual phone. This was the winner of last year's uh, spring bio blitz because we felt it really well um, encapsulated spring. There's some snow at the bottom. We had a little red squirrel after a long winter and we had the Siberian squill, which I'm sure many of you are aware of too. So this was the winner of our last year's uh, bio blitz for best photograph. And then this one is the absolute best. One randomly selected account will be also winning a pair of binoculars. So if you come out for 15 minutes on Saturday and you take pictures of five things in the wild and then you say, okay, I need to go. I have other commitments. You are put into a lottery and we'll pick names um, on Tuesday and uh, the Tuesday after Saturday. And we'll determine uh, one randomly selected person that's going to be getting binoculars as well, which is really cool. So you don't have to be up there with the best photo. You don't have to be up there with the most species. Uh, just come out and support uh, the work that we're doing um, and you have a pair of binoculars. So that's the end of the official um, presentation. I'm going to stop recording now and I'm gonna give everyone an opportunity to ask questions either um, if you wanna unmute yourself or in the chat bar, if you have anything, please post it now. Uh, once I figure out how to stop recording.